never know what's going to really happen. You know, right. At the end of the day, you do a certain amount of work, and then part of the whole thing is that there's always a surprise. You know, there's always, and then you work with the surprise, or you work with the chance, and there's always a sense of randomness. I think it was in high school. I was uh, uh, the inclination was to to copy certain things that I saw uh, in in popular culture. Uh, we did figure drawing in high school. Did landscape drawing. Uh, I mean, this was North Dakota. I grew up in North Dakota, so it was uh, very wild. I mean, there were like 600,000 people in the state where I grew up. Like I live in Tribeca now. There are 600,000 people in Tribeca, at least. It, everything was much more open-ended, but also the information we got was much less, and so you were left to your own devices to to uh, figure out what direction you were going to go in, especially if you weren't a good learner in the traditional sense, which I wasn't, uh, unless I loved something like history or art. But that's when the art stuff started, is in, uh, in North Dakota. The stillness of the environment was probably what got me uh, involved with trying to make something more. I think my first major influence uh, in art was going to the Rockefeller collection, the African collection that Michael Rockefeller bought over to the uh, Metropolitan. When I walked in there, I think that was my first real epiphany about what, what uh, totemic art could be, what sexual art could be, what shamanistic kind of art could be, what, what, uh, what spiritual art could be. Um, that led to making a lot of different sculpture. I was a sculptor then, and that made oh, I, I made a lot of sculpture in relationship to those uh, things that he had bought back from Africa. That was my first real, real uh, influence. Um, then the other, the influences were Rauschenberg, Johns, uh, I think Schnabel a little bit, even though we're the same age. Uh, Stephen Westfall was a really good friend influence on me as a contemporary. Uh, artist. I lived in Europe almost all of the 80s into the 90s. Uh, I lived in the West Coast. I lived in New York. So I think the combination of all those things have influenced the direction of my work. And I think my work is a uh, is a amalgamation of uh, all those influences. Uh, but yet there's something that's completely unique that's come out of how I make these things.
people ask a lot. People ask you, what are your influences? What, you know, what are you trying to say? For me, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Conversation for me, as well as art making, is very visceral and it comes out of the actual making of the thing. So I can't really, even as I'm looking in, at these paintings here in the gallery, I can't really put my finger on what I am trying to say because it is actually a really nonverbal language. So in order to understand what it is that I'm trying to say with my work, you actually have to look at the painting because I'm actually speaking a language that's not English or French or Spanish or whatever. It is the language of visual thinking. This visual language encompasses so much more and we're able to articulate so much more and we're able to go to places that our vocabulary won't take us uh, as a spoken word. So it's about space, it's about context, about the uh, energy, the, the push of energy, and also trying to contain that energy. Um, and so the, the process is just going to work every day and seeing what I can learn and how I can push myself forward. And you have to really just take take it for what it is rather than try to make it into something else. It's not something that you can, you can talk about it, but it just sounds stupid after a while because it, the language is there, it's not here. It's not coming out of my mouth, it's coming out of the painting.